This is the second of two videos for people who are completely new to animating characters in After Effects and we're doing it using Limberlite. In the first one in the series we showed you how Limberlite works and some ways of customizing those limbs to make them work for your characters and in this one we're going to take a character that I've already animated and add some limbs. <laughs> So you can see that I've already animated the essential movement of this character going backwards and forwards. And that might seem a bit like cheating, but it's actually a totally valid way to work. Sometimes uh, if things are very, very simple like this, or if they're really complicated and you're getting some distraction from your IK limbs, it can be a better idea to kind of go back to basics and just animate the body and the feet, even if they're in a walk cycle or something and get a feel for that essential movement and the line of action and the posing before you add any IK. So if I stop the animation from playing and we're gonna add those limbs in now. So with the limber light panel open, I'm gonna click on new bone and I'm gonna call this one front arm. So we get our default yellow bone. The first thing I'm gonna do is style it to match the style of the character. And I'm gonna imitate these kind of gray lines of his eyes and mouth. So I'll select the limb layer itself and then I'll crank down this stroke width to something suitable like that. And then I'll sample the color directly out of the comp like that. And then what we need to do is position these controllers. So uh, this one here, the end controller, that has all the properties on it for the limber uh, effect. And that is going to be equivalent to the wrist or ankle. So I will put that somewhere here over the back of his hand and then the other one the start controller that needs to go over his body and I'm going to have to parent this layer to his body so I'll uh, grab this pick whip drag it over the body layer which is down here and let go and then if we move through the timeline you'll see how that's now parented but the other one isn't so if I parent the end controller to something that would probably be the hand layer so his front hand is there and then now we've got the beginnings of an IK character. But thinking about the movement of this guy, you know, he's rowing and he's clearly kind of straining when he goes backwards and then he sort of gets kind of pulled backwards by the machine. So when it's uh, at this uh, backwards point here, I wanna make sure that the arm is dead straight to kind of follow the line of this uh, rope and uh, sort of express uh, tension in it. And obviously that doesn't work if it's, if it's kind of bent like this. So I basically just need to make that arm shorter. So with the end controller selected, I'll twirl down this shape uh, group in the limber effect, and then I'm gonna turn down these properties to something where they just start to sort of get short enough like that. Uh, and then if I scrub through the timeline, I can see that they do bend here. I definitely wanted that kind of release of tension when he comes forwards, and then they're gonna straighten out when he goes backwards like that. So that's all good. Uh, but I think I'm gonna give this character more bendy arms, not, not these straight ones. So I'll turn up this bone curvature property to make them curvy, and that's all looking pretty good now. So let's just make the back arm now. And we'll speed this bit up so that you don't have to sit through me doing it all at real time. And the limb itself I'm gonna to drag to the bottom of the layer stack so that it goes behind. Uh, so when I uh, preview this, I'm gonna actually just turn all these controller layers off temporarily so I can see how it really looks when I hit preview. And actually I can see that that front arm isn't in quite the right place because it's on top of everything. That needs to be behind that hand. That looks better. Okay, let's add some legs. New bone, front leg I will call this one. And then again, I can sample this color. Okay, entering this manually now. The end controller I'm gonna position about there and the start controller I'm going to put here and in this situation obviously we have the leg going the wrong way and that is what's called the clockwise property so you can see here it's on 100 most of the time you're going to want your clockwise to either be 100 or minus 100 percent you can have it somewhere in between but that's really uh, used for when you want your character to kind of turn from facing one way to the other. So I'm actually just going to enter minus 100% in there and that knee will now go upwards rather than downwards. 
And if I parent the start controller to the body once again, and then with the end controller selected, uh, I'm going to just zoom in and show you that obviously at the moment our end controllers, uh, in fact all our controllers, they don't rotate at all. But if we turn up this uh, rotate end property, that will automatically rotate the end controller uh, according to how the limb moves like this, you see. So now that we've got that auto rotation, we can parent our feet to that controller and then they will rotate along with the limb. So let's just zoom out again. And I think we should uh, get the length of the leg right to begin with. So if I come here, I can see that they look pretty long, okay? And uh, so I'm gonna increase this bone curvature, make them nice and bendy. And then I don't like the way that they're going in front of his face, okay? So I'm gonna make them way shorter, something more like maybe like that and then that looks better so now when they're out straight i'm going to take this front foot layer uh, and the pedals which are these little gray bits are already parented to the feet layers okay so you can see that as i rotate the foot that pedal kind of comes along with it so i'm going to parent that foot layer to the end controller okay and now it'll rotate along with that limb so that one's done let's make our last leg so i'll speed this whole process up again for you but obviously just bear in mind that we're going to end up parenting the other foot to the end controller this time and we just need to make sure that that limb goes at the back of the layer stack and the front one should probably be behind that front foot like that. That also makes it easier to turn all the controllers off and preview. So sometimes if you have all four limbs pretty much exactly the same like we did here, it can seem a little bit repetitive to have to keep styling them in the same way. That's the situation where we'd really be better off with the full version of Limba, where you could just style a limb once, click the duplicate button, and Limba would generate an exact replica of that limb with all the same parenting hierarchy and everything. If you want to learn more about the full version of Limba and all the other great features that it comes with, then you can just click the Get Limba button in Limba Lights panel or the link in the description below. Uh, and if you haven't already checked it out, have a look at the other video in this very short two-part series about Limba Lite, where we explain how to style limbs in ways other than just changing the stroke width and the color. Other than that, I'll see you next time.